First of all, how many people were involved or are involved in that phase one study? So good morning, Becky, and thank you for having me. Uh, the first three cohorts of uh, healthy adults, 18 to 55 years old, were 45 subjects. Uh, recently, we decided with NIAD, the department of Dr. Tony Fauci, to add an elderly cohort, 55 to 70, additional three cohorts, and then three additional cohorts, 71 years and above. Uh, as, as Meg said, this is a very exciting data. It's still interim data, so the phase one is still ongoing. Uh, but if you think about where we sit today with the data that Meg described, we could not be happier. Were there any side effects or any ill effects among any of the people who took this vaccine? So the vaccine was safe and well tolerated. Very typical to a vaccine. You have two types of side effects, uh, Becky. The first one is local pain. As you can understand, when you inject a needle in somebody's arm, it never feels good, so you have pain. And then when you press on the needle, the volume of liquid basically goes and creates harm into your muscle cells. So it's a bit painful, but not worse uh, or better than another vaccine. You have sometimes, for a few people, a bit of redness around the site of injection for a day or so. Again, my immunologists tell me this is actually a good sign. I see some immune response. Uh, and then on the systemic level, you have a few subjects that have you know, some chills at the end of the day, a couple of people, a tiny bit of fever. Like when you get a flu shot, it goes away by itself. You don't even need a Tylenol, just go to bed at night, and then the next day you're on your feet again. Again, immunologists will tell you this type of uh, observation are very consistent with an immune response. Stefan, it, it, let, let's talk a little bit about how long ago these people were injected uh, with, the, with the doses as well, because I think there are questions about whether there are after effects uh, that come further down the line. I know people have questions about that, especially seeing some of the situations we've seen with children where it seems like they're fine, and then a few weeks later they're getting this um, related sort of symptoms uh, that, that are, are bad news from coronavirus itself. How, how long ago did these injections take place? Yes, yeah, so the first subject were injected on March 16. Uh, and if you think about the Sentinel dose that we reported neutralizing antibodies, antibodies that can bind and neutralize the virus, they were injected basically now, you know, uh, in March, mid-March. Uh, and uh, while we are monitoring, of course, safety very carefully, we care deeply about safety because vaccine obviously are given to healthy people. If you look at the totality of the data across the nine vaccines before the COVID that we put into the clinic, uh, some into the elderly, some in viruses like RSV, which is another respiratory virus, for which we has been in the past, you know, 40 years ago, reported some enhanced disease. Uh, we have not seen that across our platform. We have not seen that uh, as to date uh, on this vaccine. Again, we will monitor, but we don't have uh, a reason to believe there should be enhanced disease with this technology, but again, we want to be safe and we'll, of course, monitor for patient safety. So, Stefan, uh, over the years, whenever we're watching uh, uh, a drug progress through these clinical trials, it's always hard for, for lay people to understand the difference between phase two, phase, phase one, phase two, phase three. So we're in phase one or phase one, phase two, and we're thinking it's just safety. All right, we're trying to measure safety and dosage and things like that. But you are reporting, at the same time, evidence of efficacy because you're saying eight out of eight develop neutralizing antibodies. So the phase three that is, is a test for efficacy, how will that be different from what you're already seeing here? It'll be a much larger uh, study, I, I guess, and you'll be looking for basically the same thing you just told us, though, right? You, you want to see neutralizing antibodies in, uh, in all the patients that get the vaccine without side effects. So is this that different than what, what you're expecting to see in the phase three? Or will that just be a confirmation? So a, a bit of both, Joe. So the first thing is safety. So phase one are typically in vaccine in the tens of subjects. It was 45 here. Phase two in the hundreds, as we said, our phase two will be 600 subjects. And we look at safety and same immunogenicity. And the phase three would be thousands of subjects. You can expect many thousands. We are still discussing with the agency. Once we have finalized a protocol, we will communicate it. But we care deeply about understanding the safety of this vaccine. So that's for the size of the study. In the phase three, we will monitor neutralizing antibody, of course. But what we'll monitor is efficacy. This would be a placebo control study, like our phase two is going to be placebo control. 
to see people that get the vaccination versus people who get a placebo. How many people can you protect from disease to get us an efficacy rate to be able to file to the regulators, assuming a good outcome for an approval? Stefan, it's Meg Terrell. You, you mentioned uh, in terms of the side effects that you did see fever in a few of the patients. Can you tell us how many of the patients experienced fever in the study that you've observed so far? You know, I'm just getting some feedback from some, some folks who are very closely focused on this space and they sort of seized on the idea that some people might have developed fever as a, uh, a reaction to the shot. Yeah, so you saw very few cases at the second dose of the highest dose, the 250 microgram, which we do not intend to take forward. If you recall, when we started this program very quickly, you know, in 60 days from sequence of a virus to starting the phase one, we did not have time to do enough preclinical work. We did preclinical work, obviously, but not enough. Like usually you, you will take months and quarters to really understand your vaccine. And so we put a very big range, 25 microgram minimum, 100, and 250, just not to miss efficacy, because we were running against this virus and time was very precious. From what we've seen today of the neutralizing antibody at 25 and 100 microgram to all the participants at or above uh, people that have uh, recovered from a virus, we don't need the 250 dose. And so again, that the fever was at the second dose at the boost, at the highest dose, which again is typical when you have too much of an immune response, which now what we know of how strong the 25 microgram is, is not surprising that 250 microgram, when you come again a second time, the immune system is kind of telling you, hey, that, that's a lot of antibodies I'm making now. Stefan, just the question that, I mean, again, this is amazing to see um, the efficacy that is taking place in this. And I think that's why you're now looking at the Dow up by more than 420 points. Uh, but just the idea that you need two doses. There are more than 320 million people in America. How, how quickly can you start knocking out doses? What, what does your timeline look like? And has it changed at all from when we talked to you a few weeks ago when you were getting that phase two approvals um, from the FDA? So we were already, as you know, working on process scale up. And with our loans up out of ship, we said we could go up to a billion uh, doses per year. What is clear is with this new data, which we just got at the end of last week, we're going to increase our investment in capital equipment, in raw materials, so that we can make as many doses as we can. We know uh, every dose is going to matter. Uh, there's a very nice study and work that the CDC has done preparing for a pandemic flu a few years ago that is available online. And they describe there the priority that people will get the vaccine. You know, healthy young adults are not first in line. Healthcare workers are. Elderly with comorbidities are. So uh, we're going to go basically by waves of people for vaccination. And as I said before on your show, I do expect that over vaccine make it too, because no manufacturers can make enough doses for the entire planet. But if several vaccines have a chance to get to approval, we have a chance to uh, significantly impact the reduction of infection and disease and go back to a normal life. Your stock is up 30 percent um, on this news this morning. Year to date, it's up 341 percent. Where, where are you getting the money to make these additional investments? So, as you know, uh, Becky, we have a strong balance sheet, uh, 1.7 billion uh, reported at the Q1 earning call, uh, a grant from BADA, $500 million uh, plus grant from the Gates Foundation and others. So the company is well capitalized. We have also partners. So uh, the company is in a great place to invest aggressively. Just, just, just to that point, though, given where the stock is, you think about uh, making a billion of these things, uh, a billion of these doses. What do you ultimately think the price, even the price, could even be, and what the profit margin should or shouldn't be, given these issues? Yes. Yeah, so uh, we have not spent too much time working on price yet. We need to get to it now. As you can appreciate, going from sequence to phase two in four months and six months to a phase three. We had no time to do anything but that, and the team has been working literally seven days a week. And so we need to start thinking about pricing. As you can appreciate, we're going to be very thoughtful. We know it's a pandemic. Uh, we know people are waiting for the product. And so we just have to figure out uh, what's uh, the right price for this product.